Hello, everybody. Hey, I think probably most of you have been here before and you know what we're doing, but while we let everybody finish logging on, I like to run through a couple of the basics so you know what you can do after this if you want to learn more. So welcome. This is fractions, multiplication, and division. We're going to be working on some of the basic basics of that. We're not going to try to master it. We're not going to try to give you all the information you could have. But we're going to give you some basics so you can get started on it. And then the reason I like to show this is, I don't know how well you can see it, but in your email, you'll get a download of something like this. It's called a learning guide. And what it is, is it has steps. It says read some pages out of this book, then do this activity, then read this, then do this activity. And it kind of walks you through how to use this book to learn this subject actually at a really expert level, which today, as much fun as I hope we have, and as much as I hope I can teach you in the 45 minutes that we have, there's no way you're going to be expert at this unless you already are. But you should know a little bit more about it, and you should be able to do some basics of multiplying and dividing fractions. Sound good? Excellent. Okay, so I hope everybody's logged in. I see we have many people, and the q and is starting to fill up. I'm not going to be able to reply much to the Q&A because it's just me, but for all of you that are out there, hello, thank you for coming in. Shrishti, Elena, and all the rest of you who have said hi, thank you, hi. Nice to have you here again. Okay, so today we're gonna work on how to multiply and divide fractions. So I'm assuming you already know the basics of fractions pretty well. We did a couple classes last week where we did some of the basics. Uh, if you didn't come to that, we might go past some stuff that you're not sure of. You can put it in the Q&A and I'll do my best to clear it up. Um, but you can also get the um, unit four. So what we're doing today out of this is unit five. This is six. <laughs> I grabbed the wrong book, sorry. But unit four has the basics that I'm going to kind of skip over. And I'm going to skip over some of the basics in unit five. But if you want more unit four, unit five, that's probably the best place to go. All right. So Let's start by a quick review of basics. So what is a fraction? I'm gonna pull up a quick definition from Math Essentials Unit 4. Okay, we're doing Math Essentials Unit 5. That's what this book looks like. Unit 4, that's that one. All right, so fractions. We use numbers to talk about amounts. It's 60 yards to that stop sign. $1.50 for that muffin. Six more guys needed on that job. Sometimes we wanna talk about only a part of a whole thing. If you're cooking, you might need to use one half of a cup of sugar. If you schedule an activity, it might be for three quarters of an hour. When you buy food at a deli, you might buy two thirds of a pound. A fraction is a way to say exactly how big a part of something is. So when we're talking about fractions, we're talking about parts. And fractions give us a way to talk about exact amounts. And I have an example here for us. Um, let me press the right button. There we go. OK. So it was my wife's birthday recently. And there was still cake left over. So I brought it in. So let's assume this is a whole cake. Well, that happened. <laughs> Guess I have to eat it. Rough. Mm, thanks, James. Sort of. Now I have a reason not to lick it off my fingers. Um, all right. So let's go back to assuming that this pile of goo is a whole cake. I think you can all see it right there. So this is one cake. Now I cut it into four pieces, and I have one piece. OK? This is a fraction, we would call this one fourth. So when we're talking about fractions, we're talking about a part of a whole. So this is the whole and that's the part. Good, I'm sure you all got that. Let's go back to the next thing. All right, so we can use a fraction to say the pizza is divided into eight equal parts and one of those parts is gone. We say one eighth is gone. So you can look at the picture of the pizza here, right up here, and you can see that we had a whole pizza. It was cut into eight equal parts, and one of those parts is gone. So one eighth is gone. 
So the top number in a fraction is called a numerator, and it tells how many parts we have, or we're talking about. And the bottom number tells how many equal parts there are. So the bottom is called the denominator. The top is called the numerator. So in this case, I know this is review, but let's just do it in case anybody missed last time or has any questions. I think this is always helpful. So here we go. We got a hole. It's cut into four pieces. So we know the bottom number is four. That's the denominator. And right now I have two of those pieces. So that would be the fraction that would represent that much cake would look like this. Two over four. So that means two out of four. Numerator, denominator. How many parts we have, how many parts the whole thing was cut into. Okay, so that's it. That's our review. I'm going to stop in the Q&A. If you have any questions on that, we'll take a minute and anything I can help with, I'd be happy to help with. So let's see what we got. Doesn't look like anybody has any questions. We're good to go. We're going to move on. All right, so we're going to talk about multiplying a fraction. So that kind of lends or goes to the question, what the heck does it mean to multiply a fraction? If I say multiplying, it means I take something and I add it to itself over and over again. So if I have one hand has five fingers and I have two hands, that's two times five. Make sense? If my friend James over there came in, I'd have four hands here and we'd have four times five. Oh, here comes James. Four times five. So that's multiplication. Very simple. <laughs> so in fractions, it's actually the same thing. So check it out. So if I have one fourth of a cake and then I go, hmm, I want to go three times that. I want to multiply that by three. I would end up with three quarters of a cake. Same basic concept. But there's something that's a little bit tricky with fractions. And I'm going to show you that. And once you know this, it, it tends to make the subject of fractions a lot easier. All right, let's see. Hang tight while I pull this up. Okay. So... So here's another way to look at it. So we're going to read this. So finding a fraction. Let's say you bought 12 donuts. You want to give two thirds away. How much is two thirds of 12? Whoops. Sorry about this little box on there. Uh, it looks like I put that on when I was putting the slideshow together and I forgot to take it off. So two thirds of 12. So we have 12. We break it up into three pieces, right? So now this is one third, two thirds, three thirds. So if we want two thirds of 12, we have that one and that one. And we can see that that's eight donuts. So two thirds of 12 is eight. Make sense? Good, and you can see the math on that down there. If you write it, two thirds of 12 is eight. So finding the fraction of a number is the same thing as multiplying the fraction times the number. So 2 thirds of 12 is the same as saying this. I'm going to put this back on the board. So 2 thirds of 12, you could write it like this. 2 thirds of 12. And if we have a whole number, I'm not going to review this, but that's another way to write 12 because it's whole pieces. So two thirds times 12. That would be the same thing as saying two thirds of 12. So that's the thing I want you to get. When we're saying times, it's actually the same thing as saying of. So if you say one half of 10, that's easy. We could all figure that out, right? James, what's one half of 10? Five. Five. He nailed it. Sounds a lot harder if you say what's one half times 10? Yeah? Yes. But it actually is that the same is thing. The same thing. <laughs> one half 
of 10 is 5. We know that. So, oh, sorry, I didn't share that. If you want to see, 1 half of 10 equals 5. So you guys get that trick? So when you think of multiplying in fractions, a lot of times it's really helpful to think the times means of, and then you can actually think what's going on. So one of my theories in math is math can be really fun if you think of it as an actual thing, not just a bunch of numbers that don't represent stuff. If we use math to kind of figure things out in the world around us, that's what it's actually there for. If we do math just because math is there and math is math, there's no point. There's no real point in learning it. So let's kind of kind of keep thinking with that. How do these things relate to the real world? And of really helps with that. Hope that helps you. Okay, let's see what's next. Okay, so good. We're gonna go to a slide next. Let me pull it up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So here's another example. To find 4 sixths of 18, here's how they do it. So they have 18 marbles. So 4 sixths means the marbles are in six equal parts. So you can see they kind of boxed off six equal sets of marbles. Every set has three. So each of these is one of six equal parts or one sixth. And we want to talk about four of those parts. So you can see in this bottom picture, they took four of those and we can see how much four sixths is. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So we know that one, sorry, that four sixths of 18 is 12. Make sense? All right, so I'm gonna do a little bit of the math on that. I'm just gonna show you the basics of how we do that. If I can click back here, think, think, there we are, okay. So on the board, that would look like this. <clears throat> let me know too, if you guys can't see well, let me know. And there's a setting we can adjust that can darken up my writing a little bit and I can write a little thicker too. All right, so we've got four, six of 18. Now here's the trick. I'm gonna show you more about how we do this but we know that that equals 12. I'm just gonna do the math on the screen for you real fast, and then we'll kind of work back through it later as I give you a little bit more of how we do it. So we're actually gonna multiply four times 18 and six times one. So four times 18, luckily I did some of this already, so I kind of remember 72, and six times one is six. And then if we reduce that down, which if you were in the last class, you might remember the basics of reducing, but if you reduce it down, that equals 12. Because if you divide 72 by six, you get 70, or you get 12, and if you divide six by six, you get one. So hopefully I'm not rushing through that too fast. If you don't have any idea what I'm talking about on reducing a fraction, it's in unit four. Uh, it's got some pretty good descriptions of that, and I think it'll get you all set. Okay, so that's that. So now we're gonna move on to something a little bit more tricky. So that was pretty easy to think about, right? If you have 18 marbles and you need four sixths of them, we kind of get what that would mean. But what if you have this? What if you have something like one half of three fourths? What the heck does that mean? So one half of three fourths. So here's how this is. So in this first, let's call this a candy bar. So we have a candy bar and you can see that three fourths of it are marked out. But we wanna have one half of that. So we're trying to go, what is one half of that three fourths? So here's how they did it on this. They separated it out into one half of each of those fourths. And now you can kind of get a visual idea of how, what that is. So one half of three fourths would be all of these on top. And if you look, each of these is now eight equal pieces. And we have three of those pieces. So one half of three fourths is actually three eighths. 
Does that make any sense? We can do a couple more examples. I'm gonna read this, read aloud on this because I think they describe it pretty well. So they say three fourths of the shape is shaded. What if we need to know what is one half, half of that three fourths? We need to separate it in half. Now the whole thing is divided into eight parts. And we can see that one half of that, one half of the three fourths is the same thing as three eighths. Finding a fraction of a number is the same thing as multiplying the number times a fraction. There we go. So there's the first basic thing. Uh, okay, so let's do a real life example of it. Okay, so James, would you like to assist me in eating some cake? I would love to. Wonderful. I knew you'd be a willing and helpful man. That's why I'm here. So I only have one half of my cake left. Okay. Now, it's James and I are here and I wanna share it. So I wanna go, hmm, well, what would one half of one half be? Well, I would have to cut my one half into two pieces and I would know one half of that is one fourth of the cake. So that would actually, if we were to do the numbers that represent that, here it is. <coughs> That means I started with one half of a cake. My friend James came in and said, yo, I want some cake. Hey, I'm your friend, right? Give me some cake. <laughs> and I said, okay, well, I only want to give you half of the cake because I want cake too. That's fair. So I said, what's one half of one half? And what did I end up with? Well, here's the way you do that math. Multiply, multiply. So I get one, two times two is four. So I end up with one fourth, and that's what we got when we actually demoed it out, right? We ended up with one fourth. Now, this could be tricky. What if Marty came? What would I do? I have one fourth of a piece of cake left. <laughs> so what, what am I gonna do if Marty comes? Lock and, the door. <laughs> and my one fourth, <laughs> I wanna share with two other friends. So now I have one, fourth and I gotta go hmm what's one third of one fourth so here's the math that would represent that question so go what's one third of one fourth so I multiply multiply one twelfth so that's how much cake so if I wanted to save Marty his equal share I would get him one twelfth of a piece of cake and what that actually means is I actually took this one fourth and I cut it into three parts. I ate one myself, gave one to James, and I saved one for Marty because I'm a nice guy. Make sense? James, how's Makes my sense. math? Your math is delicious. Mm, I knew you were gonna yeah. say that. <laughs> All right. So people out there, math can be delicious. All right, so what I wanna do now is I wanna do some problems. Now that you've kind of got the basics of it and we've done a couple problems, I'm gonna put a couple problems out and then we'll work them over on the board, okay? All right, mm, I guess I don't need to share anything on the screen. So let's see, how are we doing on time? Oh my goodness. We always seem to not have as much time as I want. Oh, actually, we got till 2.15, not two, right? Oh, we have lots of time. Hurrah! All right. So let's see here. I'm going to just draw some problems out. I'm going to, the first two I'm just going to do, and then I'll put some out that you guys can do without me. If you want to do these while we're going, feel free. Okay, so let's do this one first. So this one would mean two thirds of four fifths. So we could say, I think it'd be fun if we just make up problems as we go. So I have four fifths of a dollar, that's 80 cents. I have three friends, I wanna give two of them an equal share of my money. Um, and I wanna keep an equal share for myself. So how much money do I need to set aside for my friends? All right, well, let's figure it out. Here's the math. 
Two times four, eight. Three times five, 15. So I would actually end up with eight fifteenths of a dollar is what I would have to save. Now I'd have to figure that out and multiply it in a sense, which you can do. I'm not gonna try and do it right here, but it, <clears throat> it's actually pretty doable and easier than you think. But there's a whole bunch of other lessons we'd have to teach you to kind of get started on that. So not for today. All right, good. Were any of you able to follow along with that and do it yourself? I'm checking out the Q&A. Thank you all of you who answered that I can see perfectly. Yeah, many of you just nailed it. Good, okay, you guys are doing great. Good job. Way to go, Isis, way to go, Shanna. Perfect, Lorna. Good job, good job. Great, Milo, great, Trishti. All right, you guys are nailing it. All right, let's do another one. So, let's say I have one half of a pizza. I was hungry, I ate half, I have half of it left over. Um, my mom says there's three more people that need to eat pizza and to split it up into figure out how much each person gets of that pizza. So I wanna figure out how much is one, I guess we'll do it like this, one third of one half. This is an easy one. One times one, one, three times two, six. Okay, now on this one, I'm not gonna come up with a story. I'm just gonna put a tough math one out there. If anybody wants to be brave and put a story in the Q and A, That'd be awesome. But we're just gonna put a tough one so we can work on the math part of it. 31 fortieths. And I want, can you see if I come over? Yeah, I want one half of 31 fortieths. Seems a little bit bigger, but it's actually all just the same thing. One times 31 equals 31. <clears throat> Two times 40 equals 80. So that's my answer. One half of 31 fortieths is 31 eightieths. Pretty simple. Now what if both numbers are really big? Does it still work? Let's try it out. <clears throat> Three Twenty-three, twenty-three, forty seconds of fifteen twentieths. This is a big one. So <clears throat> I'm going to solve this in one minute, but I want you guys to go ahead and see if you can use any of the skills that we figured out to come up with an answer on that. James is working on it. We'll see how James does. No pressure. I think if James gets it right, we give him a piece of cake. All right, I'm gonna open the Q&A, see if anybody's putting any answers in there. Okay. Hmm, Gayathri made up his own excellent, excellent math problem. I'm gonna share that one with you later. We'll, we'll do that and we'll, we'll make some problems and we'll share them and we'll solve each other's problems. Okay, Isis got an answer in there. Milo's got an answer in there. Amelia's got an answer. James has an answer. Now James took it an extra step. He simplified it or reduced the fraction. If you know how to do that, Go ahead, you can put that in too. But let's go ahead and do some math and let's see how James, James is. So James, would you like a whole piece of cake if you get this right or just a sliver? Uh, I would like 23 40 seconds of a piece of cake. Great, that's exactly that much. <laughs> I'm sure it's not. 
All right, well, let's check James's work. Here's James's answer. I'm sure you can't see it. But he <laughs> said 345 840ths, and then he reduced it down to 69 168ths, which, by the way, is the same answer many of you put in. Um, 69 168ths or 160ths? Because Shrishti says it's 69 160ths. Mm, James is worried about his cake. All right, let's check it out. 23 times 15 is 380. No, 345, excuse me. This is calculator work, I think, people, but different people have different ideas about what should be used with a calculator. All right, 42 times 20. That one you can actually do in your head, a lot of people. So that one is 840. So now we have to reduce it. So we have to figure out what number could we divide both of those by? Well, an obvious one is five. Should we start with five? James says there's a better one. James says we could do it by 15. Oh, no, that, that, yeah, oh, that's no. fine. No, nope, James says we should do it by five. All right, James with the calculator. 345 divided by five is? 69. 69. 840 divided by five is? 168. 168. Okay, so that is the answer. And I don't see how you could reduce that anymore. You can divide this by three, but you can't divide that by three. So James, congratulations. You are correct. Enjoy your cake. I took both pieces. Oh, you are a cheater. That is one, one, what is that? It's one fourth times one third. So it's one twelfth plus one fourth. Let's find out how much cake James just stole. If you get this right, I'll give you some of my cake back. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. You can have your cake, but it, this is fun. So it, James, show it that is cake. your cake. So. so we have one fourth which I told him he could have, and then he took an extra one twelfth. So if you remember from adding and divide, adding and subtracting <laughs> fractions, we got to fatten this up, which is our, what cake would do. Our viewers just saw a piece of cake plunge off the plate. <laughs> <laughs> wah, 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 wah. You, you can have that piece. All right. So this is three twelfths plus one twelfths, four twelfths. Huh. One third. James, you are taking one third of my cake, buddy. Enjoy that one third of your cake. You deserved it. <laughs> and I'll leave that mess for you to clean up afterwards. Actually, that looks kind of delicious. I'll clean some of it up. Mmm. Chocolate mint cake, if anybody's curious. That's pretty fabulous. Wow, many of you guys nailed this one. Congratulations. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And James, enjoy your cake. You earned it, my friend. All my right. pleasure. 158, so we have 15 minutes. Great, we can do a little bit of dividing. All right, so here's the thing. Dividing is so easy. Once you have multiplication down, dividing is actually super simple. It's a little bit harder to kind of think with. And I didn't really come up with a bunch of good examples. I kind of ran out of time while I was preparing and I thought, oh, I'll come up with some examples later, and then I didn't. So let's see how I do just coming up with some off the top of my head. Uh, first, let's read, read the pack, because that's going to give us some. And then I'll do my best to try to translate some numbers into some real world, because I think that's really important. OK. OK, here we go. So dividing by a fraction. So division means to separate a number into equal parts. If you have six objects, how many groups of two can you make? So we could start with an example. I still have this cake over here that James hasn't stolen yet. So let's yeah. pretend this is one piece of cake. And if I separate it into two equal parts, that would be the same thing as dividing by two. So I took a piece of cake and I divided it into two equal parts. Okay? So one divided by two is one half. So we can see how big that part is. Okay, excuse me, I'm making a mess. You can see on my hands, this is kind of a disaster. Um, okay, so 
six divided by two equals three. You can see that in the marbles. They had six marbles, they broke them up into three, into groups of two, and you can see that there's three equal size groups. You can do the same thing to divide by a fraction. Suppose you wanna know how many halves there are in three. You would divide. So we have three pairs and we cut them into pieces that are each one half. So there are six one halves in three pairs. So you can see there's six half pairs in there. So you can see we're doing the same thing. We're just using fractions. So a good thing to notice is that three times two is the same exact thing as three divided by one half. Isn't that interesting? And when you divide by a fraction, you usually get a bigger number. So if I did 10 divided by one half, I would get 20. So the numbers tend to get bigger when you divide by a fraction, as long as the fraction is smaller than one. Okay, so now we're gonna hit a word. This is called reciprocals. So you can see it here. I'm gonna stop the share and I'm gonna define that. So, a reciprocal is a big fancy word for something that's actually really easy. And I'm gonna write them on the board before I even explain it. Because I think when you see it, you'll get it better than if I try to explain it. So one half, the reciprocal is two over one. Three fourths, the reciprocal is four over three. Two thirds, the reciprocal is three over two. So I think you can see the pattern here. If I had 115, 20, 215, the reciprocal would be pretty easy. We take the bottom one, put it on the top, take the top one, put it on the bottom. 215, 115. Okay, so that's the simple explanation of what a reciprocal is. What it really means is what number can I multiply this by to get one? So here's the trick. If I go one half times two over one, I get two over two, which is equal to one. I don't know if you can see that very well. Hopefully that makes sense. I'll give you a couple more examples, um, but it's pretty simple concept. Two thirds times three over two equals six sixths, which of course equals one because we took the pizza, we cut it into six pieces, we have all six pieces, we have a whole pizza. Make sense? Lovely, so that's a reciprocal. A reciprocal is the number when you flop the bottom and the top. And what it really is, the math definition is the number that you multiply by to get one. So I think you get it. I'm gonna check the Q&A if anybody has a question on that or wants to get any more explanation. <laughs> a lot of comments on the cake. I totally understand. <laughs> Nahilia says we just reduced, and I don't know if she means fractions or if we reduced the amount of cake that was on our on our table. Both would be true. She's right in both ways. <laughs> All right, good. Doesn't look like anybody has any questions. I think you guys get it. Reciprocal, pretty easy. So now we're going to go back to the screen share, and <laughs> we're going to read this because this is actually the most simple thing: how to divide with fractions. So reciprocals and dividing. When you multiply a number times its reciprocal, you get one. That's what we just went over. For example, the reciprocal of two thirds is three halves because when you multiply two thirds times three halves, you get one. So here's the key. In this blue box, you have the entire secret to dividing fractions. Dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying the reciprocal of that fraction. Sounds complicated. It's actually really easy. So, I'm gonna do this math, well, it's on, the, it's on the pack, we'll just run through it. Dividing six by one half is the same as multiplying six by two over one. So I'm, I am gonna show you that on the board, so hang with me. So if we have six divided by one, half. 
it's the same as six times two over one. That's all you gotta do. So you got six over one times two over one, six is 12, one. So six divided by one half is 12. When we know that, because if we had six pears, or let's, let's take apples, we have six apples, and we wanna know how many halves, half apples we have in those six apples, we have 12. So that's all that we're doing. That's all that you gotta do to divide. It's super simple. Let's look at the next couple examples and then we'll put a few problems up there. And then what I'd like to do, if we have a little bit of time, is I'd love you guys to put some problems in on the Q&A and we'll solve them on the screen. Okay, dividing, by f dividing four by two thirds is the same as multiplying four by three halves. So four divided by two thirds equals six. Four over one times three over two equals six. Dividing five by one quarter is the same as multiplying five by four over one. Five divided by one quarter equals 20. Five over one times four over one equals 20. So I think you guys get it. So let's put a couple problems up on the board and we'll solve them together. And then I'll put a couple problems up there and you guys can solve them yourself. Maybe we'll even let James try for some more cake. I don't know if James is ready for more cake. Always. Yeah. All right, so if we have three fourths divided by two thirds, very simple. You just swap these two. So you just go three fourths times three halves. Three times three is nine. Four times two is eight. So three fourths divided by two thirds is nine eighths. Simply simple. So you can get a little tricky with this and there's a mistake that I might as well show you, you can watch out for. So sometimes it's easier to just switch these and just go, okay. So three times three, just do it in your head. Three times three is nine. Four times two is eight. Because I know I'm just going to flop those two. The tricky thing is you got to watch out for it. Sometimes you flop the wrong ones. Like if you accidentally do four times two and three times three, you end up with the wrong answer and you end up with something that doesn't actually fit the question that you're thinking of. So that's the only warning I have for trying to do it without rewriting it is you got to really know it's these ones that you're switching, not these ones. Okay, good. Let's do a couple more. I'm going to put four of them up there. You guys solve them. Here we go. We'll do one half divided by two thirds. And we'll do three eighths divided by two fourths. And we'll do four fifths divided by six sevenths. Okay, so this will be problem one, problem two, and problem three. Okay, go ahead and solve. After this, we'll do a big challenge one where James can earn his cake if he would like. I'll pull up the Q&A and we'll read out some of the answers you guys put in. And yes, Lorna, James did eat his cake. It is all gone. Mm, Isis put a great question in there. I'm gonna mark that for challenge later. Yeah, Amelia, exactly right. In other words, the second set you flip. That's what I try to remember, that works for me. Sometimes I get, I get it confused, but if I do the second set, that's pretty easy. All right, we got an answer coming in from Ethan. Nice, Ethan. Okay, good, we got a bunch of answers coming in. Okay, good. 
Here we go. I'm going to solve them on the board. You can check your work against what I get. Hopefully I do it right. If I get a different answer than you, tell me, because I could have messed up just as much as you could have. All right, so that. Here's the tricky part. All right, one times three is three. Two times two is four. All right, so one half times two thirds is three fourths. Sorry, one half divided by two thirds is three fourths. All right, three eighths. So I'm going to bring the four up. Three times four is 12. Bring the two down. Eight times two is 16. You can reduce that one. I'm going to divide both of them by four, and I get three fourths. Again, whoa, I didn't even mean to do that. That's hilarious. Okay, wish I was smart enough to have set that up on purpose. All right, here we go. Four times seven, because we're going to bring the seven up, is 28. Five times six is 30. We can simplify that a little bit by dividing both by two, and we get 14 fifteenths. Ta-da! All right. Now for the James challenge. Are you ready? Let's see. Let me think here. What is worth a piece of cake? Let's say we have 36, 40 seconds divided by 52 sixtieths. Ooh, what do we get? You get a long pause is what you get. <laughs> <laughs> James, I have faith in you if you can do it. But I don't have a pencil. All right, we'll work it out on top. I'll make James use the calculator for the big ones. I'm not going to lie, I am using the calculator just in interest of speed. Yeah, it's okay. I don't yeah. mind you using the calculator to do like 36 times 60. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. As long as you know how to multiply, which I know you do, James, I think then calculators are a great tool to use. But if you don't know how to multiply with that one, that's a problem. So I always tell my math students, just learn how to multiply. Once you learn, use the calculator all you want. It's a tool for you, as long as you're not a slave to it, as long as you, you, if you didn't have it, you'd be okay too. That's okay. I think I took a wrong turn uh -oh. somewhere around Albuquerque. Uh-oh. And I'm gonna count on our loyal viewers to set me right. All right, well, we have our first answer in. We're gonna check it. James, do you wanna put yours, your potential no, answer up there? Ahead. See. I, I'm going to defend myself really quick and make a quick advertisement for the next webinar. As Sam is here doing amazing work with fractions, I have been putting the final touches on my slideshow for the next webinar coming up in about 20 minutes, which is data on current uh, missions in space. Which you'll see if we raise this. I think James has a space background. Uh, it's not set at the moment, but oh, it I thought will that was be. a starry field then. No, it's just black just black huh? yeah well, it's gonna be super <laughs> it's the right. least creative thing i've done with this green screen the whole time well james gets no cake but let's see I get no cake. let's see who else says we got a bunch of people rolling the answers in all right here we go let's do this james you're my calculator okay so we're gonna go we know that this is the same as doing 36 40 seconds times 60 50 seconds good so to keep my mind straight, on a bigger one, I like to write it down. Up to you guys. So 36 times 60 is? 2,160. 42 times 52. Is 2,184. Wow. Very close to being exactly one, but not quite. All right, so now we got it, but we could reduce that a little bit, I bet. 
What, what could we divide this number by that we can also divide this number by? Let's see. 2,184 is going to be the trickier one to reduce. Can we do that divided by 4? Sure can. That's 546. Okay. And then 2160 divided by 4 is? That is 540. What was the first one? Oh. Gah! Uh, 546 was no, the first one. Can't be. 546 was the bottom. 546 was the bottom. Yep. Okay. And the top was 540? Yep. Okay. Well, I can see we could definitely do both of those divided by two. Maybe other numbers. Maybe six? Probably not. Can we do 546 divided by six? Do we get a whole number? 91. 91. Okay, let's divide them both by 6. So we get 91. 90. So we get 90 over 91. 90 over 91. I don't James. Think we can reduce that any further. You did it. Would you like some cake to Sam, get ready for I space? I award you with cake. Okay. Have some, my friend. All right, good. And for all of you out there, James, why don't you eat that on behalf of all of the people who got that? Correct, which is many of you. This is for you. <laughs> Good. Mm -hmm. The reduced answer was 90 over 91. 90 over 91. Oh my gosh, we're over time. Of course, we're we always over time. All right, well, okay. my friends, enjoy your cake through James. And I hope that you all come back in about 14 minutes when I'll be talking about missions in space. I am so excited to talk about this. Great, and everything we did is in here. If we went a little too fast or you wanna drill more, that has a bunch of really great drills. And if you're getting really good at fractions, the next course, number six after number five is word problems fractions. Really good one, kind of fun to how to take some real world thoughts and then how to use math on them. So use these if you need them to help with that at Heron Books. Sure, you guys have all heard this already, but I think it's worth telling you newly. So at Heron Books, we, oh, if you just want a whole bunch of math, there's the math set. Yay! It's a really good setup if you Great want to do stuff. some math at home. Um, you can get the whole book, the big thing, or you can get individual chapters. Great way to do some math at home. But here's what will help 30% off because you came to a webinar, Heron Books, who does all the curriculum for the Delphian School put a 30% off discount for anybody who comes to the webinars. And I'll leave that up for a couple minutes so you can go get it. Thank you for coming. Uh, I appreciate it. Sorry we're out of time, but I hope hopefully you learned a lot. And remember, when you do math, keep figuring out how does it relate to the real world? How can you use it to actually solve problems, not just how to manipulate numbers for the sake of moving numbers around? Like you wanna, you wanna have the numbers mean something. So keep looking at that all yeah. the way. You might need to eat a lot of cake to really get it. Yeah. <laughs> Mackenzie just sent me a message that her mom bought the whole package and they're going to use it this year. Great. Cool, Mackenzie. I hope you enjoy it. I'll see you guys all next time.